Why are you talking to the police without a lawyer present? <sighs> Law and Order is gonna drive me insane. Law and Order is back, baby. I grew up with Law and Order. I love Law and Order, and I was very sad when it got canceled. It's been off the air for over a decade. A decade. And why would you cancel regular Law and Order? It was a tent pole. Why? It was a tent pole. A tent pole. I'm super happy that it's back. Though I don't know if it holds up, but let's get to it. Let's dig in. Two separate yet equally important groups. The police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Diane, I spent three years, two months, and 11 days in prison for a crime that I did not commit. Like many people of color, I was wrongfully charged and wrongfully convicted. Okay, so uh, right off the bat, we have a guy who was a stand-in for Bill Cosby, and right off the bat, this video is completely demonetized. Great, wonderful. Over here, named Henry King. The singer? Among other things. All right, so clearly it's going to be one of this guy's victims that uh, got revenge and killed this guy. This is a classic law and order. Just ripping it right from the headlines and, you know, just laying it out on a platter here is, is my guess where this is going to go. All right, Law and Order's back, I love it. Mrs. King, where were you tonight between the hours of nine and 11? Okay, so this is, this is the widow. Uh, she's clearly a suspect. Why doesn't she have a lawyer? Have a lawyer if the police are talking. And their first question is, where were you? They're asking to find inculpatory evidence. You can afford a lawyer, get a lawyer, yeah. Since your husband was released from prison, have there been any problems? Have you noticed anything unusual? I think this is unusual that you're talking to the police without a lawyer present. I just found a text on King's phone sent two days ago. It says, it's over, I'm coming for you. All right, so in classic Law & Order fashion, this is going to be a hot lead that turns out to be a red herring. I guarantee it. Hey, hey, how you doing? We're looking for a guy named Shabazz Walker. Seen him? Yeah. Yo, yo, I'm not done talking to yo, you. Kiss my ass. What you say to me? Hey, hey, Frank, oh, Frank, what you oh, okay. All right. Now, come on. There are circumstances where the police can detain you, but this guy isn't a suspect. This isn't even a material witness. This is some random person that this guy has found on the street, and now the police are laying hands on this guy. That's that's clearly a constitutional violation here. Are you kidding me? These young kids, they got no respect. Oh, so he disrespected you and you just grabbed him. You don't get to do that, police man, uh, burn notice guy. You did <laughs> it's like a free pass. Yeah, not sure what you mean by that. Uh, I mean, I'm white, he's black, I say the wrong thing and my career's over. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, is there another way of looking at this? Hey Frank, you came at him hot. Came at him hot? He laid hands on him, he restricted. That's, that's assault, it's more than coming in hot. If we're gonna keep this thing going, you gotta know something about me. Hmm. I speak my mind, probably about things I shouldn't speak my mind about, but it's just how I'm wired. I mean, that's just good writing right there. Uh, just replacing all the subtext with, with text. Uh, I, I speak my mind, probably about things I shouldn't speak my mind about. I mean, that's, uh, that's just, you know, A, a plus. <laughs> Look at this. I know her. She's a prosecutor, her name's Jamie Ross. Henry King has been harassing me since he was released from prison. Blames me for ruining his life. Hmm. Why you? I was the lead prosecutor on his rape trial. I was also the one who made the original promise not to- Why are you talking to the police without a lawyer present? I mean, sure, it would look a little weird if a district attorney asked for their own attorney, but still, you know, you don't want to talk to the police if you have potentially some involvement in a criminal homicide. At the time, there was only one victim, Nicole. And it was a tough case, there wasn't a lot of evidence. So I offered him immunity for that one case so that Nicole's lawyer could depose him. So you're the reason he went to prison and the reason he was released. All right, this is really interesting. See, this actually did happen in the Bill Cosby prosecution. Uh, the prosecuting attorney uh, made a statement that they weren't going to, to 
prosecute Cosby. And then later on due process grounds, he was able to get out of prison after three years, claiming that he relied on the statements of the prosecution. Interesting fact, the prosecutor at the time was Bruce Castor Jr., who would go on to represent former President Trump in his impeachment hearings. But basically, and a lot of people disagree with this, the statements of the prosecutor were the reason that Bill Cosby was let out of jail. And so we're basically copying that fact circumstance in this prosecution as well. Why did you and Henry King meet the other day? He said he was going to destroy me, destroy my family. And I, I just lost it. And because of your mistake, he's walking out of jail a free man. What are you really asking me, detective, if I killed Henry King? Did you? <sighs> Get the hell out of my office. Mm, ooh, she doesn't answer the question there. And also did not have legal representation. If you're talking to the police, get legal representation. Hey, got a hit. Here's King's wife on the corner of 78th and Columbus, two blocks from her house. Timestamp says 9.33. That's 27 minutes before Henry got popped. I didn't lie. I just left out a few details. Well, that's what lawyers would call a distinction without a difference. After dinner, I started walking home, but I knew Henry would still be awake and I couldn't bear it. So I went to a bar a block away, Maxwell's, had a few drinks. Okay, so without a lawyer, you are admitting that what you told the police previously was a lie, and now you are also saying that you have uh, animosity towards the victim. Um, yeah, not, uh, not the brightest on this one. Uh, this is probably nothing, but I did notice someone hanging out at the end of the block a few times. He had on a hoodie, green, I think, and he was wearing sunglasses, even though it was dark. Okay, so she <laughs> she was drinking, she left out a bunch of details, and then she's able to remember a mundane fact, like there was a person with a hoodie on the night of the murder. I mean, it's kind of like the Simpsons episode where they ask, you remember a, a boy with a piece of paper? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you don't, you don't forget a fact like that. When Milhouse left, did you notice if he was carrying a piece of paper? Oh yeah, you don't forget a thing like that. We got a hit from the DNA. A woman named Nicole Bell, uh, maiden name Nicole Atkins. Wait, okay. <laughs> Is this like the next day, the next week? Is this months in advance? Surely you can't get a DNA match just like immediately. And even then, you know, is this person going to be in the database? I mean, <laughs> uh, that, this seems like some real CSI nonsense right here. Nicole Atkins was the first woman to accuse Henry King. Oh, called it. It's one of the victims, committed the murder, nailed it. Tuesday night, I was home with my husband. Why are you talking to the police without a lawyer present? <sighs> Law and order is gonna drive me insane. No one in this building thinks you did anything wrong. Hell, if we're up to me, I'll give you the key to the city. The other thing you gotta understand is we've got the whole thing on video. Yeah, holding the SIG 380, waiting outside the service entrance, shooting King. Okay, so uh, the police are allowed to lie to you. This has gone up to the Supreme Court many times, and uh, the Supreme Court says that the police are under no obligation to tell you the truth. It's popular belief that the, uh, you know, the police have to tell you that they're police and they can't lie to you. That's total nonsense. The police can lie to you all that they want. So uh, what he's doing here passes constitutional muster. We already know what happened. Why are we even talking? Because oh, they're lying to you and you don't have a lawyer. Dummy. Tell us your side of the story so we can help you. Then what? Nicole, you move on with your life. I give you my word. <laughs> Again, it's probably getting close to the line, but I don't think that that violates any constitutional issues here. Well, you saw his TV interview, right? There was no remorse, none. It was like he was mocking us. I, uh, I couldn't take it. Yeah, and then she confesses, okay. Yes, I shot him. Nicole Bell, you're under arrest for murder. What? You just okay. said that 
I lied. <laughs> and of course, right. She's surprised because she's being arrested after she confessed to the crime. Now, you might be wondering, uh, was she given her Miranda rights before this interrogation? And the answer is probably no, because the police are just doing an investigation. Uh, Miranda rights kick in only when you are dealing with what's called a custodial interrogation, meaning that you have already been arrested. So generally, when someone is arrested, they are read their Miranda rights at the same time. But if the police are interviewing you and they haven't arrested you, you're free to go, then you're not in police custody and the police can still use your confession against you, even if you haven't gotten Miranda rights at that point, presumably. We, we don't know exactly what happened in this investigation, but that's the way that they're portraying it. So I don't think the lack of Miranda rights at this particular time is an issue with respect to this, this confession. Keller filed a motion to suppress Nicole Bell's confession. On what basis? Defendant was improperly Mirandized. Confession wasn't known involuntary. Police used improper and coercive tactics. Did Cosgrove lie? Yeah. Did a good job too. Yeah, who cares? Well, I mean, morally, whatever, but like, <laughs> why does this district attorney care whether the interrogating police officer lied or not? This case is front page news, no one. I get it. But with all due respect, that's not relevant. When you asked me to come here, you said, I need someone who sees the world through a different lens. The district attorney is recruiting specific uh, assistant district attorneys to like, see things through a different lens? What is that nonsense? No way. But it's a legal confession, Nolan. Cops are allowed to lie. They are but it makes the confession less reliable. Less Why? Ethics. No, it does no, no! Like what version of ethics are they going to go with here that a constitutional legal method of interrogation that got them the confession was, so what, it was used. No way, I don't buy this for a second. Cosgrove spun the suspect upside down. He practically promised her immunity, told her that no one in the DA's office would even consider prosecuting her, why let the defense tear him apart on cross, shift the focus away from the evidence and onto her sympathetic client and the big bad police department? I just want to do what is best for this case. Yeah, no, that is, that is, uh, that's so wrong. Okay, then it's out. How? Thank you. I mean, if, if he's not going to use the confession, then you assign another assistant district attorney to prosecute this case. You know, just yank, yank him off. Okay, so this is February. Two months after the murder, they're going to trial? That's, that's not a thing. That, that just doesn't happen. No way. Two blocks from the brownstone, tossing the murder weapon into a dumpster as for motive. Well, she's got a good one. When the justice system failed her, the defendant took matters into her own hands, got justice her way. I mean, that's, that's a classic uh, opening statement. You, know, you, you can't make an argument, but you need to explain that just because uh, the, the victim of the murder <laughs> did some bad things, that, that doesn't entitle the defendant to take law into her own hands. And uh, you, know, you need to, to set that out right in front of the jury. So he's doing an okay job. I think you could do a better job of it, but you 100% would want to get that out in the open and just own it from the very beginning. Where did you recover the murder weapon? There, ECT found it in that dumpster. Detective, you have no idea that the hoodie you recovered is the actual hoodie that the person in the photo is wearing. You have no idea. No, that is a, that's a really bad question. You would never ever phrase a question that way because that's not what the witness is saying. Correct. Whoa, what? You're, what are you talking about? Yes, you have an idea because you can use your eyes and you can see the one that's in the photo and you can compare it to the one that's in court and they look really similar. So that's, uh, that's a really dumb question to ask and that's a really dumb way to answer that question. Okay, so help me out here. If someone is wearing a sweatshirt and shoots a man five times at close range, there would likely be blood spatter all over it, correct? Not necessarily. And like I said, when we yeah. found the hoodie, it was damp like she just washed it. But. Ah, man. So the classic blunder in cross-examination is you're trying to get the witness to agree to your conclusions. You just lay the foundation. 
this hoodie did not have any blood on it. And then you, with an expert witness later on, you would have them testify that if someone was shot at close range, that the blood would get on a hoodie. And then you connect those dots later on. You don't try and do it through an adverse witness. This is bad. You have absolutely no evidence that Nicole Bell committed this crime. Just some random blood-free hoodie that vaguely resembles the hoodie no, that the person in the photograph is wearing. No, that's not what he's testifying no, to. What the woman in yeah. that green hoodie by that dumpster is Nicole Bell. Detective, please refrain from drawing conclusions. I apologize, Your Honor. I'm not drawing conclusions because the defendant actually told me she tossed the murder weapon into that dumpster when she confessed that she Objection. shot and regained. Sustained. Counsel, my chambers now. So what the hell is going on here, Price? As I said, Your Honor, Detective Cosgrove made an honest mistake. I know Cosgrove. He's smart. He doesn't make honest mistakes. Whatever he said, he said for a reason. It's possible. It, it's still my fault. I should have reminded Cosgrove that the confession was inadmissible. I apologize, but his testimony wasn't overly prejudicial. A curative instruction can fix this. Ah, uh, that seems... That seems unlikely. I mean, what he's asking for is the judge to instruct the jury to forget the, and disregard that they heard this talk about confession. Uh, but it's, that seems awfully prejudicial. But the thing is, this confession was, was not illegally obtained. So even if you decided as the prosecutor not to introduce this evidence, I don't think you would ever make an agreement with the defense that would tie your hands in case something like this happened. I agree. <laughs> I'll advise the jury to disregard Cosgrove's statement. What? No mistrial? The jury cannot unhear what Cosgrove just said. They'll have to, because we're moving forward. The problem is, it's grounds for appeal. So I would not want to continue prosecuting this case knowing that the Court of Appeals might just turn it around like that because of this prejudicial information that came out. He poured me a glass of wine and I just stared at it. I was afraid he might've put something in it. He saw that I was nervous and that infuriated him. He, he started berating me, so I ran outside. He followed me, grabbed me. I thought he was going to kill me, so I shot him. Henry King ruined my life. He ruined 39 other lives, too. And some judge just let him walk free. Objection, she's making a speech. So I shot him, so the- I mean, uh, making a speech, that's not- not an objection. I guess he's saying she's lapsing into a narrative, but uh, like you don't, you don't make that objection when the, the you know this kind of a witness is testifying. Did the defendant tell you she planned to kill Henry King? I refuse to answer on the grounds that it may incriminate me. Okay, so this would cause all kinds of problems with the <laughs> the trial here. I mean, obviously you're not allowed to use someone's uh, statement that they refuse to testify against themselves, I actually don't know if that applies to third parties or if the jury can take an adverse inference given that some witness is refusing to testify on the grounds that it might incriminate them. Yeah, this is a disaster for the defense. This is just really, really bad. I don't think this is bad for the prosecution at all. The jury wants to acquit, irrespective of the facts, irrespective of the law. Too bad we didn't have a damn confession. <laughs> okay, yeah, that would have been good. You told me a story a while back about your family. You're saying you want me to deliver the closing. I'm a prosecutor. I am sworn to enforce the laws of the state. Yet I understand the defendant's desire for revenge. Nine years ago, my sister was raped and murdered. Ah, I don't, I don't think you're allowed to bring in that kind of a personal anecdote on closing argument. That, that seems incorrect right there. When Henry King was released from prison, the defendant's thirst for revenge escalated. Maybe she even began to fantasize about killing him. That's, uh, that, that seems like an awful lot of speculation even for closing argument. This case comes down to one simple question. Did Nicole Bell intentionally shoot and kill Henry King? If the answer is yes, 
You must convict. On the count of murder in the second degree. Wait, <laughs> why would it be murder in the second degree? I mean, this is, this was premeditated. I mean, she planned it out and that was the entire prosecution's argument here. It really should be murder in the first degree. Uh, I don't think there's any, like, yes, it's a lesser offense, but if you prove up all of the elements of murder one, and then you go for murder two, it's gonna confuse the jury. That um, it should be murder in the first degree. Guilty. You got it right, Sam. Doesn't feel right. And now she's showing remorse, but it, it was absolutely the right decision. They would have used the confession and they would have no problem about this conviction. It's, uh, this is, this is weird. This is silly. The only thing that will let me sleep is you requesting the lightest sentence possible. What? No, never. Okay, well, at least Law & Order is back. Now it's time to give it a grade for legal realism. On the one hand, uh, you have basically a case that parallels the Bill Cosby case. Issues involving immunity, lying to the victim, and the constitutional issues that come as a result of that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, basically everyone's motivation makes no sense, the strategy makes no sense, and uh, none of this would ever happen because the DAs would not have uh, moral issues with any of this. So on the whole, uh, God, I, it pains me, but I have to say this is probably C or C minus. I'm thrilled that Law & Order is back, but this was terribly unrealistic. And apropos of this episode, there's been a lot of discussion about the potential to end Roe versus Wade, and it often feels like there's nothing that we can do, but that's not true. In fact, if you want to do some good for this world, I'd recommend Tab for a Cause, which lets you raise money for charity just by opening tabs and browsing the internet, which you were probably gonna do anyway. And Tab for a Cause has responded to your request, and they just launched Tab for Reproductive Health. Every tab that you open in your browser will raise money for nonprofit organizations protecting and providing access to reproductive health care like the Center for Reproductive Rights and Planned Parenthood. And Tab for a Cause is great, I use it myself. It's a Google Chrome extension that allows you to pick the, the charity of your choice, and then every time you open up a new tab instead of a blank page, it displays a new customizable tab with a couple of tiny ads. And the money that you generate is then donated to your charity. You can even customize the new tab that opens up in your browser. And in fact, Legal Eagle Tabbers have raised over $35,000 for charity. And I know this because Tab for a Cause's finances are 100% transparent. Transparent. You can see for yourself how much they've raised and where it is gone. All you have to do is click on the link that's on screen right now or in the description to install this browser extension. That's it. Every page that you then open will create revenue that goes to charity. So just click on the link that's on screen. It's the easiest way to donate to charity. And you can even just sit there and open up a bunch of tabs for fun. So just click on the link below to download the extension and do some good by doing what you were going to do anyway. So click on that link or I'll see you in court.